So how can you beat procrastination before it even starts? I remember reading several books by Brian Tracy. I was early on in my business and I wanted to stop the perfectionist inside of me because I was constantly talking myself out of taking any action. That's when Brian told me, everyone procrastinates. The difference between high performers and low performers is largely determined by what they choose to procrastinate on. Do not wait. The time will never be just right. Start where you stand and work with whatever tools you may have at your command, and better tools will be found as you go along. One of the worst uses of time is to do something very well that need not to be done at all. But there was a quote that stuck out among the rest, and it was pivotal in helping me to end procrastination even before it started. He said, the key to success is to focus our conscious mind on things we desire, not things that we fear. This quote stopped me in my tracks. At the time, I didn't know much about the conscious mind, and I definitely didn't know about the subconscious, but it made me so curious about how I could control that focus in a way that would help me get more stuff done than ever before. And what I learned in that exploration and want to share with you today really helped me end procrastination for good to the point where it never holds me back anymore. So if you're ready to take full control over your actions and be proud of how often you're taking steps forward in your business and life, let's go. It's time to redefine leadership. Welcome to Modern Leadership, where we see things differently. Our channel is all about empowering entrepreneurs like you to achieve the next level of success in business and life. We believe that you can create a massive impact in the world without compromising your personal life or family time to do so. We're committed to providing you with actionable tips and strategies weekly to make that possible. So if you're ready to become a modern leader and make a lasting difference in the world, consider subscribing. Turn on notifications and dive into our community. We want to thank you for being here because the world needs your leadership now more than ever. Let's go. Okay, so I want to start off by asking you what this means to you. So the key to success is to focus our conscious mind on things we desire, not things we fear. So what does that mean? It means that what you focus on grows. Because if you are so fixated on what you fear, you're just going to get more of it. That's really how I think about it as well. What's crazy is that when I started to understand a little bit about the conscious mind, like you said, what you focus on grows. When I was thinking about what was wrong, what wasn't going to happen, why I shouldn't do something, what other people were going to think, it actually got me to take less action, to procrastinate more, and to be that perfectionist, having to wait for it to be completed and ready to go before I put it out. But what's crazy is that it's not necessarily your conscious mind that's running the show. Like they say, 97% of your thoughts are subconscious. But the truth is, is the more that you focus what you can on your conscious mind, the more you can actually program your subconscious mind, meaning it'll start to happen on autopilot. So if you're the type of person who always sees things that are broken, wrong, or missing, which is what I used to do all the time, you'll find that you create more of what's broken, wrong, or missing. As you start to take control over your conscious mind and start to think about the purpose behind why you're doing that, the potential, the hope, the excitement that you have, the motivation and their inspiration, you'll actually go out and create more of that. But as you start to do that, your muscle will start to build and you'll actually pass that onto your subconscious mind, which means it'll happen automatically. Yeah, it's really reprogramming your subconscious mind. All right, so can you share a moment in your business where you focused on your desires rather than your fears, which propelled you forward? Yeah, this actually happens all the time now. And it, it still takes a little bit of like conscious effort on my part. But early on, when I was first getting into my business, I was focused on what's broken, wrong, or missing. And I didn't realize that my business actually wasn't moving forward. One of the very specific things for me is being a police officer for 20 years uh, and then going on social media and telling people that I'm a life, leadership, and performance coach was a little bit weird because not only did I have this worry about like what other people were going to think, but they were literally saying it. They were saying, Mark, you've built your whole life around becoming a police officer and now you're going to want to retire early so you can become a life coach. Like, What are you even doing? And all of that stuff I gave power to because I was focusing my time and attention on that I actually went out and procrastinated more. I didn't get on social media. I didn't start a YouTube channel back then. I mean, it took me how many years before we actually got on here? And it's because I was leaning into what was broken, wrong, or missing or what everybody else was thinking about that. Now, what's crazy is when I started to shift that around and really my speed hack to this is hanging out with other people who are doing things that you want to do, who have goals that are in alignment with what you want. And by doing that, you naturally take on the actions of those people I started to think about like what they were thinking about me, how much more impact I will make, or the person on the other side of the video that needed to hear my message that day. 
And when I showed up that way, I actually started to not only produce better results in my business, but actually help more people. And that's why it's such an important piece that what you focus on grows. So if you focus on all those things, it's going to get you to procrastinate because our brains are really focused on how can we take the minimal amount of action, put ourselves out there minimally so we can keep ourselves safe and comfortable. So we talked a little bit about like what you focus on grows, which is what Brian talks a lot about. Now, I want to ask you, like, how do you actually know what you want in your personal and professional life? Because that's an important part of this, right? Because you can't focus on what you want if you don't know what you want. So how do you get around that? I think it's really about self-discovery and looking within on a deeper level because you can think that, well, I want success because you kind of see other people doing it. But in reality, you got to think about, is that what you really want? And if the answer is not a resounding yes, then maybe you need to dig a little bit deeper to see what you really want. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we can get really caught up on what other people are doing. And we decide on a conscious level that that's something that we need to pursue. But in reality, if we do a little bit of coaching and really find out what it is that we truly desire, then we will start moving forward. Otherwise, we're going to be taking misaligned action. Yeah, I do find that sometimes, um, specifically with clients and stuff that we work with, sometimes they're chasing somebody else's goal. And what sucks is when you put in the energy and effort, I do believe that you can achieve any goal that you want to. But when you get to the end and it's actually not what you truly want, that's not the time to figure out what you want. It's earlier on so that you can plan, reverse engineer it and figure out how to get it. And then when you get it, be so excited about it because it was what you truly wanted. So in what ways do you think fear actually holds people back in getting to what they want? And how have you kind of managed to overcome those fears yourself? The first part of this had to do with a lot of me understanding how our brain works, like what fear is actually trying to get us to do, right? It's trying to protect us. That's what our brain is meant to do. And when we realize that's the case, then we can see our brain kind of like as a smoke detector. I remember hearing this analogy of when the smoke detector goes off in your house, what's the first thing you do? Do you run outside? Do you call an ambulance? Do you call the fire department? Like, what do you do? Well, first you stop and you look around, like maybe you burnt some bacon or maybe like you put the toast in for too long and you just need to open up some windows. We don't take the fact that the smoke detector alarm to go off means that there's an immediate fire right here. We take a look around and we see what's going on. And so when the smoke detector in our brain goes off and we start to feel that fear, we just have to stop a second and go, is this something that I should really fear? Is talking in front of people, is making a social media post, is asking somebody for a sale, is that something that is really fearful? Like being in a police officer, there was a situation where I'm like, okay, I should experience fear right now. This is a part of the process. But 99.9% of the time, I didn't. And when you realize it's there as a smoke detector and you can override it if you choose, you can open up the windows, you can let it air out and everything will be fine. That's when you really start to take the control back. So I'm curious what practices you recommend for someone looking to shift their focus from their fears to actually creating more of what they want. Well, even what you just said about the smoke detector, it's about realizing that the alarm is going off and you need to kind of check it out. Because on a subconscious level, there is a desire there, but sometimes the fear of actually going after that is greater than the desire that you really have. One of the things that kind of comes up for me as you're saying that too is when we have this whole fear mechanism kick in, it makes it all about us, right? Protecting us. What is this going to do for us? Like, what are people going to think of us? And it's kind of a selfish kind of feeling because it's trying to keep you safe. What I found is in most of these situations, when we make it about the other person, the impact that this is going to make, what the right people are going to think about this message that I put out, it changes and transforms it from protecting me to making a huge impact in the world. So once you check in on that smoke detector, having something like that, where you can say, am I making this about me or am I making this about the person that I want to serve? When you make it about the person that you want to serve, you tap into what we call in our life coach certification, which is your heart voice, which is the voice of potential, purpose, love, abundance, hope, all those powerful words, because you're thinking about how you're showing up for the other person and not necessarily yourself. So I'm curious, what roles do you think mentorship plays in helping individuals focus on their desires rather than their fears? Like we said, we're talking about the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. We can't always know what is going on deep down. And many times when we're actually talking out loud to someone, we don't even realize what's coming out of our mouth because that is our unconscious mind speaking. And when you see it from a different perspective, which would be someone else, a coach, a mentor, they can ask you some really powerful questions to get you to see things in a whole different light. 
I would have to say that that's like one of my favorite things about coaching is when you're asking questions and the person just immediately responds, it's like their subconscious mind is trying to talk to me, trying to say, hey, Mark, look over here. I think we need a site correction here. And when I lean into that and I can help verbalize it back to them, they can't believe some of the things that they say. But in reality, I needed to hear those so that I can help make that correction for them. Yeah, another piece to it is also surrounding yourself with people who do still have fear, but they're out there doing it in spite of that. So that takes a lot of courage and then it can actually help you move forward as well. That was a really powerful point. Uh, I remember doing an audio recently about that. And when you come to the realization that you can't have courage without fear, like if everybody just did it, they wouldn't be courageous, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a prerequisite for courage and it's called fear. And when you step into that, not only do you show up better for yourself, but you also give more power to other people too. I mean, think about the last time you saw somebody do something courageous and how it felt to you and what it got you to do. Love to hear how that gets you to show up in the comments below. And if you haven't dove into any of Brian Tracy's books that cover this topic a lot more in depth, definitely pick up a few, including Eat That Frog. Now, in case you didn't know, we actually have a business book club that reads powerful books just like Brian's, John Maxwell, Simon Sinek, Brene Brown, and all the other powerful leaders that we all want to learn from. If you're not a part of our business book club, definitely grab a free spot below and join us on our next live stream and get free access into our app to hear feedback from the team as we go. Thank you for being here. The world needs what you have to offer. And I hope today we shared some powerful tactics from Brian Tracy to help you end self-sabotage for good. Thank you for what you do out there every single day and keep leading from the front leader. So how can you be procrastination before it even starts? Did you say be procrastination? Eat. Oh, I didn't hear that. So how can you beat procrastination? <laughs> it sounded like you said B. Sorry. Okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah, today's going to be great. It's going to be great. Kurt's going to hate us. <clears throat> okay, ready? Why are you like that? <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? <laughs> Don't try and change me.